there isn't a solution to the what car should I buy problem. Welcome to Hard Up Garage Car Stories. On this episode, you'll be wowed by cars. Oh, and by stories. So back in like the 70s and the 60s, okay, you either had hot rodders, you had Harley bike riders, or you had you know, basically your normal run-of-the-mill father that would drive a normal like, wagon or whatever, like an A to B car, right? Sure. So then like the 80s and 90s come around, credit starts to be available, right? And then, then you got this new kind of wealth because it's not real money, but mm. people that weren't like in a bike club could go out and buy Harley Davidson and enjoy that FUD and that feel of being a biker, right? So then you've got this realm of people that don't really fit into any box joining people that are in a box. You've got like your Hells Angels and your Bandidos, all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. who like associate themselves with bike guys and like bike guys were, had that association with them. Now you've got lawyers and bankers going to buy Harley Davidsons that they just want to ride a bike and they love the FUD, they love the Americana and that stuff behind it. Same with the hot rod world. If you think back in the 50s and the 60s, you buy a Merc and you cut the roof off and you blend in with your hot rod team, right? Mm -hmm. You get to the 70s and the 80s and you can go out and buy like a Fox Body Mustang with like a Shelby running gear in it. And you're therefore rubbing shoulders with people that have been doing this their whole life, who have worked hard to get into the hot rodding community or getting into the car building world and building something very special where you could put your often houser intake manifold and build a hot rod. Now you get to the point where people can afford cars that, you know, are off the shelf hot rods and they don't actually have to have the background or the money to be able to afford it. For nowadays, you've got young people that are 20, 21 years old, they step into jobs that 10 years ago would not be available. They're on cash or amounts that allow them to have lines of credit which are unimaginable 10 years ago. For the guy that's just got out of university, he is, let's say he's 21, 22, he's working as a marketer, right? And he wants to go out there and buy something that isn't just a, a Lambo or Ferrari, that's just a cool color. He wants to buy something that is gonna scare him, he's gonna enjoy it, it's a drivable car, yet it's still gonna get the reaction from the car enthusiasts that actually matter and actually care about his decision. What would you tell him to go buy? See, to me, when you look at the spectrum of car guys yeah. and all the cars they buy, they all buy the cars for their own reasons. And okay. so what we need to respect as car enthusiasts is that people for justified and personal reasons make decisions that are different than ours. Yeah. Okay. And so like there's a guy locally that has the most insanely built Acura NSX I've ever seen. Yeah. It's in, you know crazy wide body, all these parts, it's supercharged, it's painted this special color that he loves and it is built to the moon and back. He easily has more in this car than he could have had in a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a Bentley, anything else, right? And he's got 175,000 miles on it. Drove the wheels off of it, literally uh, recently blew the motor, saved up for another six months, got the motor built, back in the car, he's ready. I have zero interest in the car. It's not, it, it's not what I you know, think of when I think of the perfect car by any means, but I am so proud of this guy for having his dream car that I'm jealous of a car that I have no interest in because I can see how much it means to him. And I think that's the attitude that we've got to have as the car community is to say that there isn't a solution to the what car should I buy problem. There's a lot of solutions and they're all correct. And it's nice to have pride in whatever you like and be able to defend your position. But by that same token, if there's a car that only you get, that means you're going to have an easier time buying them. Because you're not going to be bidding against all these other people that think it's the next 300 SL. And so I love the idea of liking a car that not everybody understands, but that when they understand why I like it, maybe they like it more. Not because it's what Jeremy Clarkson says, not because it's what Chris Harris says slides the best and feels the best at the limit, but because it's what works for what I like about cars. I love that. That's awesome. Sorry for the random question, but it's, you know, like you see these guys turn up at Coffee and Octane this morning. Yeah. Octane and coffee, right? And they got like a junker that's all beat up, right? And you can see how proud these kids are driving around with them. 
and they park in next to their dream Corvette, should we say, right? And everyone's going up to them like, hey man, nice car, like, what have you done to that? And they start talking, and that's what the car community is about. We go down that road so we can meet like-minded people that have the same interests that either criticise or love our cars and to allow us to feel connected to a community that we didn't know existed. And I think your answer there about it doesn't matter what car you say to buy or I say to buy, it's about having that feeling of um, appreciation from people that don't know you, through don't care about the car you own, but actually appreciate how crazy or you know your love for the car. That's how my life's turned out, is just by meeting random people that have the same ideas, maybe hate my ideas, but it gives me more enthusiasm to do it. And I think your answer there was bang on. The popular YouTube comment now is like, nobody's gonna care about this car when the C8 Corvette comes out. Because this idea that there's a $60,000 American car that's mid-engine, looks kind of cool, and you can go zero to 60 under three seconds in it. And you know we get people that say, oh, nobody cares about a Ford GT now that there's this, or nobody cares about a Lamborghini now that there's a C8 Corvette. And I, th that has nothing to do with why I like the fast cars that I like. I like the cars that I like because of the feeling that I get when I go fast in a straight line and when I make them turn. Yep. And what, how I feel when I walk into my garage and see them. And so it's like the fact that a Tesla Roadster might go 600 miles in range and go zero to 60 in 2.2 seconds for 250 grand. You see all these lineups against it versus a Chiron. And it's like, ain't nobody with a Chiron that cares that there's faster cars. They bought it because it's the greatest car that humanity was capable of building at the moment that the first one was released. And whether or not that moment has been improved upon because people saw what they did and made a faster car, nobody cares. Like, that owns one. And so it doesn't cheapen a car's value for there to be a better car. Yeah. It just means that it's a lot easier for people to see clearly what they liked about that car in the first place and why they wanted to own it. Guys, tune in next time for another episode of Hard Up Garage Car Stories, where you'll be wowed by stories about cars.